In relativistic physics, the coordinates of a hyperbolically accelerated reference frame constitute an important and useful coordinate chart representing part of flat Minkowski spacetime. In special relativity, a uniformly accelerating particle undergoes hyperbolic motion, for which a uniformly accelerating frame of reference in which it is at rest can be chosen as its proper reference frame. The phenomena in this hyperbolically accelerated frame can be compared to effects arising in a homogeneous gravitational field. For general overview of accelerations in flat spacetime, see acceleration, special relativity, and proper reference frame, flat spacetime. In this article, the speed of light is defined by c equals 1 the inertial coordinates are x y z t and the hyperbolic coordinates are x y z t these hyperbolic coordinates can be separated into two main variants depending on the accelerated observer's position if the observer is located at time t equals 0 at position x equals 1 alpha with alpha as the constant proper acceleration measured by a comoving accelerometer then the hyperbolic coordinates are often called rindler coordinates with the corresponding rindler metric if the observer is located at time t equals 0 at position x equals 0 then the hyperbolic coordinates are sometimes called moller coordinates or kotler moller coordinates with the corresponding kotler moller metric an alternative chart often related to observers in hyperbolic motion is obtained using radar coordinates which are sometimes called LAS coordinates. Both the kotler moller coordinates as well as LAS coordinates are denoted as Rindler coordinates as well. Regarding the history, such coordinates were introduced soon after the advent of special relativity, when they were studied fully or partially alongside the concept of hyperbolic motion in relation to flat Minkowski spacetime by Albert Einstein (1907–1912), Max Born (1909), Arnold Sommerfeld (1910). Max von Lauer 1911, Hendrik Lorentz 1913, Friedrich Kotler 1914, Wolfgang Pauli 1921, Karl Bollett 1922, Stepan Mohorovicic 1922, Georges Lemaitre 1924, Einstein and Nathan Rosen 1935, Christian Moller 1943, 1952, Fritz Rohrlich 1963, Harry Lass 1963, and in relation to both flat and curved spacetime of general relativity by Wolfgang Rindler 1960, 1966. For details and sources, see section on history. Equals. <laughs> Topic: <laughs> Characteristics of the Rindler frame. Equals. The world line of a body in hyperbolic motion having constant proper acceleration alpha display style alpha in the x display style x direction as a function of proper time tau display style tau and rapidity alpha tau Display style alpha tau can be given by t equals x shine alpha tau x equals x cosh alpha tau Display style t equals x shine alpha tau quad x equals x cosh alpha tau, where x equals one alpha. Display style x equals one alpha is constant and alpha tau. Display style alpha tau 
is variable, with the world line resembling the hyperbola x 2 minus t 2 equals x 2 display style x caret 2 t caret 2 equals x caret 2 Sommerfeld showed that the equations can be reinterpreted by defining x display style x as variable and alpha tau display style alpha tau as constant so that it represents the simultaneous rest shape of a body in hyperbolic motion measured by a commoving observer by using the proper time of the observer as the time of the entire hyperbolically accelerated frame by setting tau equals t display style tau equals t the transformation formulas between the inertial coordinates and the hyperbolic coordinates are consequently with the inverse t equals 1 alpha r than t x x equals x 2 minus t 2 y equals y z equals z Display style t equals frac one alpha operator name r than left frac t x right quad x equals sqrt x caret two t caret two quad y equals y quad z equals z differentiated and inserted into the Minkowski metric d s two equals minus D T two plus D X two plus D Y two plus D Z two Display style ds carrot two equals dt carrot two plus dx carrot two plus dy carrot two plus dz carrot two. The metric in the hyperbolically accelerated frame follows. These transformations define the Rindela observer as an observer that is at rest in Rindela coordinates, i.e., maintaining constant x, y, z and only varying t as time passes. The coordinates are valid in the region 0 x infinity, minus x t x display style script style 0, which is often called the Rindela wedge, if alpha display style alpha represents the proper acceleration along the hyperbola x equals 1 display style x equals 1 of the Rindela observer whose proper time is defined to be equal to Rindela coordinate time. To maintain this world line, the observer must accelerate with a constant proper acceleration, with Rindela observers closer to x equals zero, display style x equals zero, the Rindela horizon having greater proper acceleration. All the Rindela observers are instantaneously at rest at time t equals zero, display style t equals zero. In the inertial frame, and at this time a Rindela observer with proper acceleration alpha i display style alpha underscore i will be at position x equals one alpha i display style x equals one alpha underscore i really x equals c 2 
alpha i display style x equals c caret 2 alpha underscore i but we assume units where c equals 1 display style c equals 1 which is also that observer's constant distance from the Rindela horizon in Rindela coordinates. If all Rindela observers set their clocks to zero at t equals zero, display style t equals zero, then when defining a Rindela coordinate system, we have a choice of which Rindela observer's proper time will be equal to the coordinate time t display style t in rindela coordinates and this observer's proper acceleration defines the value of alpha display style alpha above for other rindela observers at different distances from the rindela horizon the coordinate time will equal some constant multiple of their own proper time it is a common convention to define the Rindela coordinate system so that the Rindela observer whose proper time matches coordinate time is the one who has proper acceleration. Alpha equals one. Display style alpha equals one. So that alpha display style alpha can be eliminated from the equations. The above equation has been simplified for c equals one. Display style c equals one. The unsimplified equation is more convenient for finding the Rindler horizon distance given an acceleration alpha. Display style alpha t equals c alpha r than c t x approximately equals x c t c 2 t alpha x x approximately equals c 2 t alpha t approximately equals t approximately equals t C two alpha display style begin aligned t and equals frac c alpha operator name r than left frac court x right overset x g g court approximately frac c carrot two t alpha x x and approximately frac c carrot two t alpha t overset t approximately t approximately frac c carrot two alpha end aligned the remainder of the article will follow the convention of setting both alpha equals one display style alpha equals one and c equals one display style c equals one. So units for x display style x and x display style x will be one unit equals c two alpha equals one display style equals c caret two alpha equals one. Be mindful that setting alpha equals one display style alpha equals one light second per second two is very different from setting alpha equals one display style alpha equals one light year per year two. Even if we pick units where c equals one display style c equals one, the magnitude of the proper acceleration alpha display style alpha will depend on our choice of units for example if we use units of light years for distance x display style x or x display style x and years for time t 
display style t or t display style t this would mean alpha equals 1 display style alpha equals 1 light year per year 2 equal to about 9.5 meters per second 2 while if we use units of light seconds for distance x display style x or x display style x and seconds for time t display style t or t display style t this would mean alpha equals 1 display style alpha equals 1 light second per second 2 or 299,792,458 meters per second 2 topic variance of transformation formulas A more general derivation of the transformation formulas is given, when the corresponding Fermi–Walker tetrad is formulated from which the Fermi coordinates or proper coordinates can be derived. Depending on the choice of origin of these coordinates, one can derive the metric, the time dilation between the time at the origin d t 0 display style dt underscore 0 and d t display style dt at point x display style x and the coordinate light speed d x d t display style dx dt this variable speed of light does not contradict special relativity because it is only an artifact of the accelerated coordinates employed while in inertial coordinates it remains constant instead of fermi coordinates also radar coordinates can be used which are obtained by determining the distance using light signals see section notions of distance by which metric time dilation and speed of light do not depend on the coordinates anymore in particular the coordinate speed of light remains identical with the speed of light c equals 1 display style c equals 1 in inertial frames topic the rindler observers in the new chart 1a with c equals 1 display style c equals 1 and alpha equals 1 display style alpha equals 1 it is natural to take the coframe field d sigma 0 equals minus x d t d sigma 1 equals d x d sigma 2 equals d y d sigma 3 equals d z Display style d sigma carrot zero equals x dt d sigma carrot one equals dx d sigma carrot two equals dy d sigma carrot three equals dz, which has the dual frame field e zero equals 
1 x t e 1 equals x e 2 equals y e 3 equals z Display style VEC E underscore zero equals frac one x partial underscore T VEC E underscore one equals partial underscore x VEC E underscore two equals partial underscore Y VEC E underscore three equals partial underscore Z this defines a local Lorentz frame in the tangent space at each event in the region covered by our Rindler chart, namely the Rindler wedge, the integral curves of the time-like unit vector field E zero. Display style script style vec e underscore zero. Give a time-like congruence consisting of the world lines of a family of observers called the Rindler observers. In the Rindler chart, these world lines appear as the vertical coordinate lines x equals x zero y equals y zero z equals z zero Display style script style x equals x underscore zero y equals y underscore zero z equals z underscore zero. Using the coordinate transformation above, we find that these correspond to hyperbolic arcs in the original Cartesian chart. As with any timelike congruence in any Lorentzian manifold, this congruence has a kinematic decomposition see Ray Chowdhury equation. In this case, the expansion and vorticity of the congruence of Rindler observers vanish. The vanishing of the expansion tensor implies that each of our observers maintains constant distance to his neighbors. The vanishing of the vorticity tensor implies that the world lines of our observers are not twisting about each other. This is a kind of local absence of swirling. The acceleration vector of each observer is given by the covariant derivative e 0 e 0 equals 1 x E one display style nabla underscore vec e underscore zero vec e underscore zero equals frac one x vec e underscore one. That is, each Rindler observer is accelerating in the x display style script style partial underscore x direction. Individually speaking, each observer is in fact accelerating with constant magnitude in this direction, so their world lines are the Lorentzian analogues of circles, which are the curves of constant path curvature in the Euclidean geometry. Because the Rindler observers are vorticity-free, they are also hypersurface orthogonal. The orthogonal spatial hyperslices are T equals T zero display style script style T equals T underscore zero. These appear as horizontal half planes in the Rindler chart and as half planes through T equals x equals zero display style script style t equals x equals 0 in the cartesian chart see the figure above setting d t equals 0 display style script style dt equals 0 
In the line element, we see that these have the ordinary Euclidean geometry d sigma two equals d x two plus d y two plus d z two x greater than zero y z Display style script style d sigma carrot two equals dx carrot two plus dy carrot two plus dz carrot two for all x greater than zero for all y z. Thus, the spatial coordinates in the Rindela chart have a very simple interpretation consistent with the claim that the Rindela observers are mutually stationary. We will return to this rigidity property of the Rindela observers a bit later in this article. Topic A: Paradoxical property. Note that Rindela observers with smaller constant x coordinate are accelerating harder to keep up. This may seem surprising because in Newtonian physics, observers who maintain constant relative distance must share the same acceleration. But in relativistic physics, we see that the trailing endpoint of a rod which is accelerated by some external force parallel to its symmetry axis must accelerate a bit harder than the leading endpoint, or else it must ultimately break. This is a manifestation of Lorentz contraction. As the rod accelerates its velocity increases and its length decreases. Since it is getting shorter, the back end must accelerate harder than the front. Another way to look at it is, the back end must achieve the same change in velocity in a shorter period of time. This leads to a differential equation showing, that at some distance, the acceleration of the trailing end diverges, resulting in the Rindela horizon. This phenomenon is the basis of a well-known paradox, Bell's spaceship paradox. However, it is a simple consequence of relativistic kinematics. One way to see this is to observe that the magnitude of the acceleration vector is just the path curvature of the corresponding world line. But the world lines of our Rindela observers are the analogues of a family of concentric circles in the Euclidean plane, so we are simply dealing with the Lorentzian analog of a fact familiar to speed skaters. In a family of concentric circles, inner circles must bend faster per unit arc length than the outer ones. Topic: <laughs> Minkowski observers. It is worthwhile to also introduce an alternative frame, given in the Minkowski chart by the natural choice f 0 equals t f 1 equals x f 2 equals y f 3 equals z display style vec f underscore 0 equals partial underscore t vec f underscore 1 equals partial underscore x vec f underscore 2 equals partial underscore y vec f underscore 3 equals partial underscore z Transforming these vector fields using the coordinate transformation given above, we find that in the Rindela chart in the Rinder wedge, this frame becomes f zero equals one x cosh t t minus shine 
T X F one equals minus one X shine T T plus cosh T X F Two equals y f three equals z display style begin aligned vec f underscore zero and equals frac one x cosh t partial underscore t shine t partial underscore x vec f underscore one and equals frac one x shine t partial underscore t plus cosh t partial underscore x vec f underscore two and equals Partial underscore Y, VEC F underscore three equals partial underscore Z end aligned computing the kinematic decomposition of the timelike congruence defined by the timelike unit vector field F zero. Display style script style VEC F underscore zero. We find that the expansion and vorticity again vanishes, and in addition the acceleration vector vanishes, F zero F zero equals 0 display style script style nabla underscore VEC F underscore 0 VEC F underscore 0 equals 0 in other words this is a geodesic congruence the corresponding observers are in a state of inertial motion in the original Cartesian chart, these observers, whom we will call Minkowski observers, are at rest. In the Rindler chart, the world lines of the Minkowski observers appear as hyperbolic secant curves asymptotic to the coordinate plane x equals 0 Specifically, in Rindler coordinates, the world line of the Minkowski observer passing through the event t equals t0, x equals x0, y equals y0, z equals z0 display style script style t equals t underscore 0, x equals x underscore 0, y equals y underscore 0, z equals z underscore 0 is t equals r than Sx0 minus x0 Sx0 x equals x02 minus s2 minus x0 Sx0 y equals y0 z equals z0 display style begin aligned t and equals operator name arthan left frac s x underscore 0 right x underscore 0 where s display style script style s is the proper time of this Minkowski observer. Note that only a small portion of his history is covered by the Rindler chart. This shows explicitly why the Rindler chart is not geodesically complete. Timelike geodesics run outside the region covered by the chart in finite proper time. Of course, we already knew that the Rindler chart cannot be geodesically complete, because it covers only a portion of the original Cartesian chart, which is a geodesically complete chart. In the case depicted in the figure x zero equals one display style script style x underscore zero equals one and we have drawn correctly scaled and boosted the light cones at S element of minus one two Zero one two display style script style s in left frac one two zero frac one two right topic the Rindela horizon. The Rindela coordinate chart has a coordinate singularity at x. Topic 
0 where the metric tensor expressed in the Rindler coordinates has vanishing determinant this happens because as x0 the acceleration of the Rindler observers diverges as we can see from the figure illustrating the Rindler wedge, the locus x 0 in the Rindler chart corresponds to the locus T2 equals x2, x greater than 0 in the Cartesian chart, which consists of two null half planes, each ruled by a null geodesic congruence. For the moment, we simply consider the Rindler horizon as the boundary of the Rindler coordinates. If we consider the set of accelerating observers who have a constant position in Rindler coordinates, none of them can ever receive light signals from events with Tx on the diagram, these would be events on or to the left of the line T. X which the upper red horizon lies along, these observers could however receive signals from events with Tx if they stopped their acceleration and crossed this line themselves nor could they have ever sent signals to events with T minus X events on or to the left of the line T. Minus x which the lower red horizon lies along, those events lie outside all future light cones of their past world line. Also, if we consider members of this set of accelerating observers closer and closer to the horizon, in the limit as the distance to the horizon approaches zero, the constant proper acceleration experienced by an observer at this distance which would also be the g-force experienced by such an observer would approach infinity. Both of these facts would also be true if we were considering a set of observers hovering outside the event horizon of a black hole, each observer hovering at a constant radius in Schwarzschild coordinates. In fact, in the close neighborhood of a black hole, the geometry close to the event horizon can be described in Rindler coordinates. Hawking radiation in the case of an accelerating frame is referred to as Unruh radiation. The connection is the equivalence of acceleration with gravitation. Topic: <inaudible> Geodesics. The geodesic equations in the Rindler chart are easily obtained from the geodesic Lagrangian. They are t plus two x x t equals 0 x plus x t 2 equals 0 y equals 0 z equals Zero display style d d o t t plus frac two x dot x dot t equals zero d d o t x plus x dot t carrot two equals zero d d o t y equals zero d d o t z equals zero. Of course, in the original Cartesian chart, the geodesics appear as straight lines, so we could easily obtain them in the Rindler chart using our coordinate transformation. However, it is instructive to obtain and study them independently of the original chart, and we shall do so in this section. From the first, third, and fourth we immediately obtain the first integrals t equals e x 2 y equals p z equals q display style dot t equals frac e x caret 2 dot y equals p dot z equals q but from the line element we have E equals minus 
x 2 t 2 plus x 2 plus y 2 plus z 2 Display style script style epsilon equals x carrot two dot t carrot two plus dot x carrot two plus dot y carrot two plus dot z carrot two where E element of minus one zero one Display style script style epsilon in left minus one zero one right for time like null and space like geodesics respectively. This gives the fourth first integral, namely x two equals e plus e two x two minus P two minus Q two Display style dot x carrot two equals left epsilon plus frac E carrot two x carrot two right P carrot two Q carrot two This suffices to give the complete solution of the geodesic equations. In the case of null geodesics, from E2 by 2 minus P2 minus Q2, display style, script style, frac E carrot 2, x carrot 2, P carrot 2, Q carrot 2, with non zero E, display style, script style E, we see that the x coordinate ranges over the interval 0 x E P2 plus Q2, display style, script style 0. The complete seven-parameter family giving any null geodesic through any event in the Rindler wedge is t minus t zero equals r than one e s p two plus q Two minus E two minus P two plus Q two X zero two plus R than one E E two minus P two plus Q two X zero two X equals X zero two plus Two S E two minus P two plus Q two X zero two minus S two P two plus Q two Y minus Y zero equals P S Z minus 
Z zero equals Q S display style begin aligned T T underscore zero and equals operator name Arthan left frac one E left S left P carrot two plus Q carrot two right S Q R T E carrot two left P carrot two plus Q carrot two right X underscore zero carrot two right right plus and quad quad operator name Arthan left frac one E S Q QRT E carrot two P carrot two plus Q carrot two X underscore zero carrot two right X and equals SQRT X underscore zero carrot two plus twos SQRT E carrot two P carrot two plus Q carrot two X underscore zero carrot two S carrot two P carrot two plus Q carrot two Y Y underscore zero and equals P's Z Z underscore zero equals QS end aligned plotting the tracks of some representative null geodesics through a given event that is projecting to the hyperslice T equals zero display style script style T equals zero we obtain a picture which looks suspiciously like the family of all semicircles through a point and orthogonal to the Rindler horizon see the figure topic the fermat metric the fact that in the rindler chart the projections of null geodesics into any spatial hyperslice for the rindler observers are simply semicircular arcs can be verified directly from the general solution just given but there is a very simple way to see this a static spacetime is one in which a vorticity-free timelike killing vector field can be found. In this case, we have a uniquely defined family of identical spatial hyperslices orthogonal to the corresponding static observers who need not be inertial observers. This allows us to define a new metric on any of these hyperslices which is conformally related to the original metric inherited from the spacetime, but with the property that geodesics in the new metric note this is a Riemannian metric on a Riemannian 3 manifold are precisely the projections of the null geodesics of spacetime. This new metric is called the Fermat metric, and in a static spacetime endowed with a coordinate chart in which the line element has the form d s 2 equals g o o d t 2 plus g j K D X J D X K J K element of one two three Display style DS carrot two equals G underscore O O D T carrot two plus G underscore J K DX carrot J DX carrot K J K in one two three The Fermat metric on T equals zero Display style script style T equals zero is simply D row two equals one minus G O O G J K D X J D X K Display style D row carrot two equals frac one G underscore O O left G underscore J K DX carrot J DX carrot K right where the metric coefficients are understood to be evaluated at T equals zero Display style script style T equals zero 
in the Rindler chart, the timelike translation T display style script style partial underscore T is such a killing vector field, so this is a static spacetime. Not surprisingly, since Minkowski spacetime is of course trivially a static vacuum solution of the Einstein field equation. Therefore, we may immediately write down the Fermat metric for the Rindler observers d rho 2 equals 1 x 2 d x 2 plus d y 2 plus d z 2 x greater than 0 y z Display style D row carrot two equals frac one x carrot two left DX carrot two plus DY carrot two plus DZ carrot two right for all x greater than zero for all y z But this is the well known line element of hyperbolic three space H three in the upper half space chart. This is closely analogous to the well-known upper half-plane chart for the hyperbolic plane H2, which is familiar to generations of complex analysis students in connection with conformal mapping problems and much more, and many mathematically minded readers already know that the geodesics of H2 in the upper half-plane model are simply semicircles orthogonal to the circle at infinity represented by the real axis. Topic Symmetries. Since the Rindler chart is a coordinate chart for Minkowski spacetime, we expect to find ten linearly independent killing vector fields. Indeed, in the Cartesian chart, we can readily find ten linearly independent killing vector fields, generating respectively one parameter subgroups of time translation, three spatials, three rotations, and three boosts. Together, these generate the proper isochronous Poincaré group, the symmetry group of Minkowski spacetime. However, it is instructive to write down and solve the killing vector equations directly. We obtain four familiar looking killing vector fields T Y Z minus Z Y plus Y Z Display style partial underscore T, partial underscore Y, partial underscore Z, Z, partial underscore Y, plus Y, partial underscore Z. Time translation, spatial translations orthogonal to the direction of acceleration, and spatial rotation orthogonal to the direction of acceleration, plus six more EXP plus or minus T Y X T plus or minus Y X minus X Y EXP plus or minus T Z X T plus or minus Z X minus X Z EXP plus or minus T one X T plus or minus X display style begin aligned and EXP PMT left frac Y X partial underscore T PM left Y partial underscore X X partial underscore Y right right and EXP PMT left frac Z X Partial underscore T PM left Z partial underscore X X partial underscore Z right right and EXP PMT left frac one X partial underscore T PM partial underscore X right end aligned where the signs are chosen consistently plus or minus. 
We leave it as an exercise to figure out how these are related to the standard generators. Here we wish to point out that we must be able to obtain generators equivalent to T display style script style partial underscore T in the Cartesian chart, yet the Rindler wedge is obviously not invariant under this translation. How can this be? The answer is that like anything defined by a system of partial differential equations on a smooth manifold, the Killing equation will in general have locally defined solutions, but these might not exist globally. That is, with suitable restrictions on the group parameter, a Killing flow can always be defined in a suitable local neighborhood, but the flow might not be well defined globally. This has nothing to do with Lorentzian manifolds per se, since the same issue arises in the study of general smooth manifolds. Topic: <laughs> Notions of distance. One of the many valuable lessons to be learned from a study of the Rindler chart is that there are in fact several distinct but reasonable notions of distance which can be used by the Rindler observers. The first is the one we have tacitly employed above, the induced Riemannian metric on the spatial hyperslices t equals t 0 Display style script style t equals t underscore zero. We will call this the ruler distance since it corresponds to this induced Riemannian metric, but its operational meaning might not be immediately apparent. From the standpoint of physical measurement, a more natural notion of distance between two world lines is the radar distance. This is computed by sending a null geodesic from the world line of our observer event A to the world line of some small object, whereupon it is reflected event B and returns to the observer event C. The radar distance is then obtained by dividing the round-trip travel time, as measured by an ideal clock carried by our observer. In Minkowski spacetime, fortunately, we can ignore the possibility of multiple null geodesic paths between two world lines, but in cosmological models and other applications things are not so simple. We should also caution against assuming that this notion of distance between two observers gives a notion which is symmetric under interchanging the observers. In particular, let us consider a pair of Rindler observers with coordinates x equals x zero y equals zero z equals zero Display style script style x equals x underscore zero y equals zero z equals zero and x equals x zero plus h y equals zero z equals zero display style script style x equals x underscore zero plus h y equals zero z equals zero respectively. Note that the first of these, the trailing observer, is accelerating a bit harder, in order to keep up with the leading observer. Setting D Y equals D Z equals zero Display style script style dy equals DZ equals zero in the Rindler line element, we readily obtain the equation of null geodesics moving in the direction of acceleration T minus T zero equals log x 
x zero display style t t underscore zero equals log left frac x x underscore zero right Therefore, the radar distance between these two observers is given by x zero log one plus h x zero equals h minus h two two x 0 plus o h 3 display style x underscore 0 log left 1 plus frac h x underscore 0 right equals h frac h carrot 2 2 x underscore 0 plus o left h carrot 3 right this is a bit smaller than the ruler distance, but for nearby observers the discrepancy is negligible. A third possible notion of distance is this, our observer measures the angle subtended by a unit disk placed on some object not a point object, as it appears from his location. We call this the optical diameter distance. Because of the simple character of null geodesics in Minkowski spacetime, we can readily determine the optical distance between our pair of Rindler observers aligned with the direction of acceleration. From a sketch it should be plausible that the optical diameter distance scales like h plus 1 x 0 plus O H three display style script style H plus frac one x underscore zero plus O left H carrot three right. Therefore, in the case of a trailing observer estimating distance to a leading observer, the case H greater than zero. Display style script style h greater than zero. The optical distance is a bit larger than the ruler distance, which is a bit larger than the radar distance. The reader should now take a moment to consider the case of a leading observer estimating distance to a trailing observer. There are other notions of distance, but the main point is clear. While the values of these various notions will in general disagree for a given pair of Rindler observers, they all agree that every pair of Rindler observers maintains constant distance. The fact that very nearby Rindler observers are mutually stationary follows from the fact, noted above, that the expansion tensor of the Rindler congruence vanishes identically. However, we have shown here that in various senses, this rigidity property holds at larger scales. This is truly a remarkable rigidity property, given the well-known fact that in relativistic physics, no rod can be accelerated rigidly and no disk can be spun up rigidly—at least, not without sustaining inhomogeneous stresses. The easiest way to see this is to observe that in Newtonian physics, if we kick a rigid body all elements of matter in the body will immediately change their state of motion this is of course incompatible with the relativistic principle that no information having any physical effect can be transmitted faster than the speed of light it follows that if a rod is accelerated by some external force applied anywhere along its length, the elements of matter in various different places in the rod cannot all feel the same magnitude of acceleration if the rod is not to extend without bound and ultimately break. In other words, an accelerated rod which does not break must sustain stresses which vary along its length. Furthermore, in any thought experiment with time-varying forces, whether we kick 
an object or try to accelerate it gradually, we cannot avoid the problem of avoiding mechanical models which are inconsistent with relativistic kinematics because distant parts of the body respond too quickly to an applied force. Returning to the question of the operational significance of the ruler distance, we see that this should be the distance which our observers will obtain should they very slowly pass from hand to hand a small ruler which is repeatedly set end to end. But justifying this interpretation in detail would require some kind of material model. Generalization to curved spacetimes Rindler coordinates as described above can be generalized to curved spacetime, as Fermi normal coordinates. The generalization essential involves constructing an appropriate orthonormal tetrad and then transporting it along the given trajectory using the Fermi Walker transport rule. For details, see the paper by Nee and Zimmerman in the references below. Such a generalization actually enables one to study inertial and gravitational effects in an Earth-based laboratory, as well as the more interesting coupled inertial gravitational effects. History Topic overview Kotler Moller and Rindler coordinates Albert Einstein 1907 studied the effects within a uniformly accelerated frame obtaining equations for coordinate dependent time dilation and speed of light equivalent to 2c and in order to make the formulas independent of the observer's origin he obtained time dilation 2i in formal agreement with radar coordinates while introducing the concept of Born rigidity, Max Born 1909 noted that the formulas for hyperbolic motion can be used as transformations into a hyperbolically accelerated reference system German, system equivalent to 2D. Born's work was further elaborated by Arnold Sommerfeld 1910 and Max von Lauer 1911, who both obtained 2D using imaginary numbers, which was summarized by Wolfgang Pauli 1921, who besides coordinates 2D also obtained metric 2E using imaginary numbers. Einstein 1912 studied a static gravitational field and obtained the kotler moller metric 2b as well as approximations to formulas 2a using a coordinate dependent speed of light. Hendrik Lorentz 1913 obtained coordinates similar to 2d, 2e, 2f while studying Einstein's equivalence principle in the uniform gravitational field. A detailed description was given by Friedrich Kotler 1914, who formulated the corresponding orthonormal tetrad, transformation formulas and metric 2a, 2b. Also Karl Bollett 1922 obtained the metric 2b in his study of uniform acceleration and uniform gravitational fields. In a paper concerned with Born rigidity, Georges Lemaitre obtained coordinates and metric 2A, 2B. Albert Einstein and Nathan Rosen described 2D, 2E as the well -known expressions for a homogeneous gravitational field. After Christian Moller 1943 obtained 2A, 2B in a study related to homogeneous gravitational fields, he 1952 as well as Misner and Thorne and Wheeler 1973 used Fermi-Walker transport to obtain the same equations. While these investigations were concerned with flat spacetime, Wolfgang Rindler analyzed hyperbolic motion in curved spacetime, and showed 1966 the analogy between the hyperbolic coordinates 2D, 2E in flat spacetime with Kruskal coordinates in Schwarzschild space. This influenced subsequent writers in their formulation of Unruh radiation measured by an observer in hyperbolic motion, which is similar to the description of Hawking radiation of black holes. 
Horizon Born 1909 showed that the inner points of a Born rigid body in hyperbolic motion can only be in the region 10 x2 minus t2 greater than 0 display style x left x caret 2 t caret 2 right greater than 0 Zommerfeld 1910 defined that the coordinates allowed for the transformation between inertial and hyperbolic coordinates must satisfy tx display style t Kotler 1914 defined this region as x2 minus t2 greater than 0 display style x caret 2 t caret 2 greater than 0 and pointed out the existence of a border plane german grenzebein c2 alpha plus x display style c caret 2 alpha plus x beyond which no signal can reach the observer in hyperbolic motion this was called the horizon of the observer German Horizont des Beobachters by Bollett 1922 Rindler 1966 demonstrated the relation between such a horizon and the horizon in Kruskal coordinates Radar coordinates using Bollett's formalism. Stepan Mohorovic, 1922, made a different choice for some parameter and obtained metric 2h with a printing error, which was corrected by Bollett 1922b with another printing error until a version without printing error was given by Mohorovic, 1923. In addition, Mohorovic erroneously argued that metric 2b, now called Kotler-Moller metric, is incorrect, which was rebutted by Bollett 1922. Metric 2h was rediscovered by Harry Lass 1963, who also gave the corresponding coordinates 2 grams, which are sometimes called Lass coordinates. Metric 2h, as well as 2a, 2b, was also derived by Fritz Rohlich Eventually, the LAS coordinates 2 grams, 2h, were identified with radar coordinates by Desloge and Philpot 1987. <laughs> Topic. Table with historical formulas Topic. See also Bell's spaceship paradox, for a sometimes controversial subject often studied using Rindler coordinates. Born coordinates, for another important coordinate system adapted to the motion of certain accelerated observers in Minkowski spacetime. Congruence general relativity, Ehrenfest paradox, for a sometimes controversial subject often studied using Born coordinates. Frame fields in general relativity General relativity resources Milne model Ray Chowdhury equation Unruh effect